The Hengo campaign arc has followed a storyline of utmost humiliation for the Qin army and particularly the Osun. Defeat after defeat, failure after failure, humbling after humbling. This has truly been one of the most interesting storylines you will ever see about teaching one of our staple characters the simple lesson that you should never underestimate your opponent. All of this makes sense as one of the final battles to close out Chin's conquest of Xiao because this entire storyline is setting up one of the most satisfying experiences in storytelling. Sweet, sweet revenge. That's what the latter part of this arc is set up to deliver on. Even during their retreat, Ako vows that one day Osun will rise again from the ashes to get revenge on the Xiao army that has beaten them down. And by the end of what looks to be day one, Osun has now added not only Robokus, but Shibusho's name to his hit list. And now it's finally time. Let's not forget, he outwitted Rempa, outsmarted the great general of Yan and Ordo, and bested Roboku once before. He will be back. It is time to take on Roboku with the knowledge of Shibusho's prowess and the entire Saker army which made the Osun army suffer. With his statement in the latest chapter, he will be back for round 2 with the rest of the Hangar campaign arc set to be the launching point for his magnificent revenge tour, and perhaps the best performance yet in Kingdom. To begin with, one thing that we can recognize for sure is that this may be the first time at least that we've seen in Osun's life that he has been humbled so badly. Sanyo is where Osun's string of victories began and Hango seems like where his string of defeats could begin. There is already a clear parallel set up where Sanyo began with Osun having to go up against Rempa and he was able to calmly handle the situation by retreating, luring Rempa back to his fortress. This one move alone shook Rempa to the point of comparing him to the likes of Great General Hakuki, which gave birth to Osun core, being that he only fights battles he knows he can win. However, here in Hango we see the reverse. Osun begins the arc having to fight what seems to be Robogu once more, but this time around, Osun has a much harder time handling the Xiao army, and even though he has already dealt with them before, the weight of Shibusho and his Seika army have proved to be overwhelming, establishing a heavier tone as opposed to his past battles. And as conflict never experienced before, Osun has to make the difficult decision to retreat without the direct intent to. Retreating in defeat rather than as part of his strategy. This establishes the concept of what the rest of this arc is set to be. Osun facing challenges head on like usual, but this time not coming out on top so easily. Which is why it's so satisfying with his opponents now being both Roboku and Shibusho, two of the three great heavens of Xiao. Before we talk about Shibusho, it should be noted that it was also very satisfying to see that Akakin's appearance provided Osun some emotional stability. After all, Akakin has been one of the key figures in nearly all of Osun's battles so far, especially after the Akakin saved Osun's first general Ako from a desperate 2 on 1 situation during Western Shao. And while it turns out that Akakin is quite the volatile figure, it's only more satisfying to see this guy of all people putting Osun at ease. But of course, at the end of the day, the main star of this Hanger campaign, and by far the greatest threat yet in Osun's career, that we all want to see him defeat is Shibusho. And man, this one is going to be really good, because before his appearance at Hango, what Shibusho represented was essentially proof that there is still a looming threat. Perhaps the real threat, when all everyone is focusing on is Roboku. See, when we were introduced to Shibusho, he was already established as a man capable of single-handedly holding back a great general even without an advantage in numbers. A feat not many, truly not many are capable of, because otherwise these characters wouldn't hold any gravity. Now, Osun is supposed to represent absolute victory. He even expresses himself that if he were to establish his own kingdom, it would stand unrivaled in strength over the rest. The one who knows only absolute victory should be able to waltz into any battle he is confident enough to enter and dominate, right? Well, too bad. Turns out even Osun can't do that, because just like Oki said, no matter how strong one is, there is always going to be someone that comes along to show that they are the stronger one instead. And there is absolute absolutely nothing that Osin or anyone in his army can do about it. Despite everything that Osin has gotten away with up to this point, despite all his acts of ingenuity and various victories, at the end of day one, Osin is finally shown his victory is not as guaranteed as he thought. Even Osin is not above the heavens, because when someone else who has also known only victory decides to bring the hammer down, Osin is just as helpless as his opponents of past. And the character representing that hammer is Shibusho. Shibusho is the proof that Osin has not yet learned everything he needs to know. 
he is not guaranteed victory relative to his confidence. But even Osen can't enter battles off his confidence alone and get away with it. It's interesting that during this Hanger campaign, Shibusha himself seems to almost acknowledge that this is his role in the story. A flawless weapon sent to deliver the killing blow for Roboku. Shibusha serves his purpose, and here in Hango, his purpose furthermore is to act as an opposition to Osen's path of victory. One that discards needless emotions. Whereas conversely, Shibusho's path to victory values these so-called needless emotions as essential. When they encounter each other later on in this arc, once again Shibusho will be the hammer brought down upon him. Only this time, we are going to get the sweet satisfaction of Osen, showing that now at this point in time, nobody will be able to bring down the hammer on him. Having had his first defeat and a learning experience to bounce back from. So now Osen can give a giant middle finger to all of Shibusho by winning the war even after they've expended their greatest weapon despite losing this first encounter. And now there should be absolutely no one that can send after him to do anything about it. As Osen says to Akigen while retreating, he is already strategizing the pathway to a comeback. Osen now recognizing the true strength of Seika will become way too difficult to be stopped now. But this moment of turning the tables on Shibisho is not going to be satisfying just for what it means symbolically, but also on a personal level. Throughout our entire time seeing Osen, he has effectively bullied all of his opponents, and now he is the one that just got bullied. Not only did Osen outsmart Ordo and leave him mentally shaken, he also left the great general of Chu and Karin utterly speechless by stopping her grand strategy of opening Kanko Pass. Now for the first time in his life, Osen has been shut down and is met by Shibisho, who has become the bane of his existence. I'm sure in Osen's mind, no matter the various victories he has achieved, Shibisho has shown up and taken his lunch money, literally sending him to the back of the line and embarrassing him. It is kind of insane, we have never seen Osen get beaten this badly or had that beaten period. There probably could not be a more infuriating figure for Osen than someone like Shibisho, who cherishes the emotions of camaraderie and love to fight on. So the amount of satisfaction we are poised to get is set to be a most delicious meal. Did you enjoy this video? Check out my other videos. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated on my latest videos. I appreciate you guys.